Hello folks, and welcome back to the handy dandy Solely Creations channel. Been a while now, hasn't it? Well, today I got a special treat for y'all. We're going to be working on a handy dandy little death guard conversion from this dumb little Primaris man. Now see, I've always enjoyed having some fun corruption and creating my own unique death guard. But today, I want to see if I can kick that challenge up a notch, and perhaps make a Death Guard out of a Loyalist, so to speak. So, as you can see here, here are some little custom Death Guard I've created for my army. This one is currently out of see some of the parts used, as well as a reaver that I chopped up a little bit to make it look decrepit and worn out and yeah this is my custom army their whole little theme is that there are all these little death guard that wait in lie of rust piles and old forgotten war zones just waiting for some poor little man to venture on into the unknown and try to find some scrap or to linger into old derelict ships waiting for new recruits, so to speak. <clears throat> Here's another example of a kit bash I've done, using one of the old 2017 Death Guard. Whipped it up a bit. These, funny enough, actually came from, uh, oh, I don't know, a certain corn berserker by the name of Karn. He didn't need them for my little kit bash I was doing earlier. And then here's the last man. A AOS model. I actually forgot the name of this particular one. But he was perfect for a Death Guard with uh, Plague Cleaver. Pretty fun little guy, ain't he? Now, before I begin the process of hacking up the bits necessary for making this model, I actually would want to take some time to work on it. Because this particular Death Guard is actually for a good friend of mine. He just started a Death Guard army and is the current process of making a 2K. However, he's lacking a few boys. So I thought I'd surprise him with the gift of Nurgle and give him some happy new followers. This being one of them. This will be his champion for a new little kit bash I'm doing on the side. But for now, I want to turn this guy into a Primaris Death Guard. <laughs> So starting things off, I am going to actually do a rough sketch. Generally, I kind of just put things together to see how it works, but in this case, with it being a special occasion, I want to take the time and plan out how this particular little man is going to look like. So all I know is, I generally want to start off with something grotesque, but still keeping into the eyes of a recently corrupted Primaris, for example. So I'm still going to give him like the bloated body, if you will. And I want to give him a unique helm to adorn. I'm probably thinking one of one of these where it has like the horn sticking out from it. Oops. The horn sticking out from it. Probably put that to use here. Or perhaps I can put to use a helm that only has one hole in it to be more glaring and interesting or at least perhaps something more primaris we'll figure it out along the way i definitely know i want him to still keep that nurgified slightly robust but still kept body size So here I'm just working out general position and parts I want to work for this guy. Oh. 
or we keep it along the lines of something like this. This is just a rough sketch that I'm doing here, so don't be too much mind to it, little goof. So uh, welcome to a little Kit Bash video where I sketch out something for y'all. Now, this is just a sketch, so I'm not going to be too lenient on detail, but I'm still going to give myself the rough draft of how exactly this is going to be. The framework, if you will, or the blueprints. And some of the design aspects I won't necessarily do to, uh, due to lack of materials, but also genuinely I don't want too much going on. But I'll still try to keep in theme with the original design I've come up with. Let's see here. Yeah, so far, so far, so good. I like, I like how it's coming out. Probably give him either a plague knife or a plague sword. We'll keep that pending. Let's just sketch out the framework here for now. This is just going to be a champion, which is like your lieutenant or like leader of the group. A as you will, a semi-character. Now, usually I just speed this up, but I actually want you guys to genuinely watch the design process to initially get an idea of how things go, especially when it comes to concept design and art. When you're coming up with a unique look for something Just gotta give your champion the usual little lord kinda chillin', hanging out with the crew. 
Uh, Death Guard called the Nurglings little lords. Uh, I think it's actually pretty cute. Kind of derby. But I like it. Hmm. Now, genuinely, this guy, uh, your champions can be equipped with a multitude of different options. I think I want to go the kind of mm, easy route for applications and give this man your typical plasma gun with knives and fist option. See so yeah, how we have our little part right there already done. How handy. But the question remains, do I have a power fist? Okay, I do. Ooh. There it is. I was looking for it. Alright, there we are. Our quick little rough draft design. So that way I can start setting up the framework for this model. I'm keep that on over on this side for myself. Alright, so I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna grab my well used but still operable clippers for like Gundam models and other things like that. That sucker I've had for literally years, like five years, and it's done some good work. I've used it so much to the point where it's kind of a little floppy, but um, that doesn't bother me as much because I can still hold it in the way where I just do quick snaps. It's not much of an issue. Which, speaking of which, we are going to snip out the body and then figure out where to go from there. So gently, I'm going to be cutting each little part right under the model. Not too close in case I accidentally damage some parts, but given it's going to be a death guard, I'm hacking it up anyway. It's not too much of a problem. But yeah, as you see, these clippers, they cut things like butter. It's probably why they're highly recommended for Gundams. Easy. I'm also going to clip out that base, because we could do something with that. Maybe this is, I mean, granted, this is a one-piece model that you get for, like, painting and stuff, usually when Dark Imperium was out back in 2017. Which, funny enough, is kind of around when I started. I've always been a fan of Warhammer, but I've actually started building armies and getting to work back around the uh, late 2016-2017 period. But yeah, I'm just going to put that base to the side. Alright, so we got a little, little man here. Let's get back to our reference. We already got the pretty much the good framework right now. We're going to have to do something about this leg and this arm and overall chest. So let's look through my little bits box over here and see if I could find anything of use. By the way, Bass Pro Shop, perfect for holding all your random bits. Like seriously, I got all sorts of parts and I got like four of these bins. Look at that. AOS, 40k, other 40k stuff, demons, all perfect. And then these 80 little bits of admech parts that I can use for later. But right now, I'm trying to find the perfect chest for this guy. Hold on, let's get that part now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm. And that head I was thinking of as well. Where did I put that? So we're going to do a little, little dry fit, see how it's looking so far. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. 
Now currently, the design I gave our little plague boy here seems to be a Mark III armor chest plate. Luckily for me, the Death Guard have plenty of those. So I have two, almost, let's see here, three. Genuinely, they kind of vary in design, but there's one in particular I'm looking for. This this one in particular will actually be pretty good. As I drop it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to find that part later. That's awkward. Alright, I found it. Here is the perfect part. It even has the spiky rivets I actually wanted to put in. Now, before I start hacking out this Primaris guy's body, I'm actually going to need the backing of him. The backing part is actually this, right here. Or the regular Primaris pack goes into. And it's a push fit model, so I'm gonna have to chop off some of these little bits sticking out. Unless if I glue this good enough. That's what I was talking about. Little pigs for push fit. I actually don't like the pigs. On the bigger models, though, they do come in handy, I will admit. Putting together the little fetid blight haulers have come in handy using those. Now. What I'm going to do is compare the backing to the front and see if they're around a good fit. They they would be if I chop those off. <laughs> now, honestly, I throw these parts in the recycle bin, but I will actually use these as agitators for one of my new paints I just got. Agitators, like little beads or rocks or random sprue bits that you can use to agitate your paint so it shakes better and get and separates from whatever confines it glued itself to in your paint bottle. So I'm gonna do a little comparison, see if they fit pretty well. Wow, they actually fit pretty pretty phenomenally. That requires me to cut this man apart. So I'm gonna have to cut around that spot but keep the bell on so this fits nice and snug onto the front here now this is going to require some very careful clipping so as you see here I'm going to make some indentations on the sides right here right above the belt And then I'm going to do something kind of silly and dangerous. I'm going to gently push it downward. It's almost like I'm ripping it off. Oh, actually, never mind. Okay, I was going to pull it downwards and clip it off, but apparently it decided to break right at the seam where the model is built. So that just makes my job easier. I'm going to gently cut along the seam where the model was put together in the CAD 3D process. That's okay if the little parts are kind of jagged looking. We'll fix that later. But uh, generally, pretty clean separation. Not too much I had to do. I kept the back there, so this will be easy. Just plop that on here with our dry fit. We'll put the chest on here. Let's see here. Just gonna hold it together gently here. All right, that seems to be holding pretty well. I'm going to just remove this part now that it's fully built, glue it together, and we'll be back for the rest of the kit bash. So now I have this put together. Look at that. It's like pretty much a perfect fit. 
I'm gonna have to green stuff fill in these little sides here, but that's okay. Because instead of green stuff, I will be actually be using this hand dandy Vallejo plastic putty. It makes this wonderful bulbous kind of grimy looking flesh texture once it's done drying. And I'll be using that to my advantage. All right, now we're gonna solve the issue of the power pack with plasma gun. Issue done, fits perfectly. A little too perfect. Gonna have to do something with those tentacles later, but we can definitely manage that. So I just wanna make sure this backpack fits nice and steady on here. We have to shave off some of that tentacle and apply it to the back here later with green stuff sculpting. But yeah, that that fits quite nicely. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little secret that I do. If I want a really fine, strong grip when things are gluing together. I do a mix of your average plastic glue, either it could be this or Tamiya, and super glue. I, I find that it helps hold things together while having the plastic glue absorb the parts together as it's melding them, and it seems to hold them pretty well. Like there are a few models that I kitbashed and I didn't like the part and I tried to pull it off. I had to use a clipper because that stuff would not break. Which is impressive and done when I, exactly what I wanted it to do. Until that moment. So I put super glue on that end. <laughs> then I put that other glue on this end and I'm going to just gently push them together. And then once they're in the right spot, I'm going to hardly, hardly, I'm going to very hard push them together. Not too hard, like what I did there. Whoops. Just gotta hold it there as it glues together. And then while it's in the process of gluing, I'm going to do a secondary, very light application of super glue just into the sides here so it assists in any excess bonding that seeps out from the regular part and so far I'm loving what we got going on here we got his handy dandy power pack already we got his nice custom chest part let's see how he's looking on his base of ours He's looking pretty snazzy, if I say so myself. Now let's see how this head's gonna look. I like the head, but I think I might change it to something else. Whoops. Okay, I like the head, but I want to see how it looks with the other one. See if maybe that has a better look to it. Wait a minute, I'm done. So, whenever you want to dry fit but not constantly hold on to the thing, uh, use poster tack. It helps stick on the part you're trying to get a look at. That's way too much. <laughs> My bad. So I'm going to apply a little bit of poster tack right here. Then I'm going to gently press the head on. All right, I'm kind of liking that. Let's see how the other one looks. 
I like that one a lot too. I could have swore I had another unique looking head here. Here we are. This is one from a failed kit bash, but it's still salvageable. It is a head with tubes coming out of it. With teeth protruding from the sides. I like it, I like it. It's not entirely what I'm going for. But perhaps I can use that head, chop off the horn here and apply it to the top. You know, we're going to do that. We're going to do some very delicate, nurgly shenanigans. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to gently use my clippers and cut off just the very, very top of this. Just the very, very top. Ever so gently. Not trying to destroy or flatten too much what we have going on here. Alright, perfect. Oh no, he's Mr. Flathead. Whatever shall we do? God, I feel like Sid when I'm doing this. Like Sid from Toy Story. And now, since he already has a little flat part there, we can stick a horn right coming out of it. But, uh, I'm gonna kind of ruin what I purposely try not to do and, uh, snip that part off. So now I just have the horn. All right, perfect. Now, I should probably pin this part, but with it su having such a small contact zone, I'm just going to wing it and hope that my super glue, plastic glue combo is gonna hold it in place pretty well. I should probably be using tweezers. I should use tweezers. Tweezers help hold tiny bits so your giant man fingers or lady fingers uh, can actually hold on to what you're grabbing onto. Ooh, alright, let's not get super glue on my finger. Just gonna turn that horn a little bit. Mm, a little too curved. Perfect. I'm just gonna put that over there and let it dry. Almost forgot to put the lid on my glue. Don't want to be sniffing that while I'm working on things, now do I? Yeet. Okay. Now, here comes the tricky part. How do I do that foot? I give it a weird hoof. I could just simply green stuff over it and create a hoof myself. But where's the fun in that? Let's see if I have any parts in here that could prove useful to us. Apparently that's going to be a no. So I might have to green stuff it. It's not too much of a problem. However, when I was trying to find a piece for myself here, I have found the perfect part to be the cloak as I drop it. There we go, another death card part. How handy. Speaking of hands, 
puns intended. Aha. Uh -huh. Perfect. Now, I do be using the Primaris arm for in this case, but the rounded shoulder plate it has on doesn't really work. I'll definitely use the Primaris arm on the other hand. If it will work. You know, funny enough, this champion I'm building here can also work for a kill team. So, and my buddy also likes to play kill team. So, you know what? This is going to knock out two birds with one stone. You know, if you put this guy in a bigger base, he can also work as a handy dandy chaos lord. So, I'm just doing a little test of it. Oh, that's like perfect. Without a doubt. I'm just going to trim. Actually, no. That little peg on the inside there is going to help hold the arm aloft. What's that right there? I'm just going to shave whatever is sticking out right there with an X-Acto knife. And when you're using X-Acto knives, you generally see people like doing that next to their finger. I'm going to recommend you don't necessarily do that, but just gently cut it. So if you accidentally slip like, you're not going to jab open your finger. You're just going to poke it. Testing fate here, by the way. Generally, I'm going to be cutting this part. So it has a easier fit. Perfect. Now, since this is done drawing, even better. Oh, I like how this guy's coming along. I am going to trim whatever's sticking out on the side here. I don't know what I did with that kitbash, but I'm just going to gently do that. I wobbled the horn a little bit. That's not done drawing. Put that back over there. Now, what we're going to do is I have this little death guard hand. I'm going to keep the fly symbol. I was going to remove it, but it's kind of growing on me. What I need to do is somehow put this on here. Now, it already has this little rim, so that's giving me an idea on where to cut. But i got to cut it in a way where it doesn't absolutely mess up the positioning. Usually there's an arm part to go to this, however, I have lost so said arm part. Unless I just randomly found it right now on the side. I think I did. Wow, I actually did. That's hilarious. Whoop. Don't have to use that now. And hack up a good part. That's... that's hilarious. <laughs> Don't you love when things work out like that? Alright. So now, I'm going to glue these parts together. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, just add a little. 
moment. And now we're going to see how well this fits. Somehow it fits better than that other arm. All right. Now, this little video I'm showing here can actually come in handy to save you some uh, time if you have extra Space Marines and Death Guard parts lying around. It comes in handy for making some extra Death Guard, especially if you bought the Dark Imperium box when you're able to. It's currently out of stock, but you could probably find it on certain places. Now, as much as I like that shoulder pad here, I kind of want something a little less showy. Kind of to fit more of the uh, Primaris turn Death Guard. So I'm actually going to dig out some bits from my Chaos Space Marine sprue. Perfect. I found the perfect one. This one. Right here. Ooh, this one would actually do pretty nicely too. Ooh, what about this one? Nope, just stick with this one. Or, hold on. This one. Because it doesn't have that ridge on this side where it's going to come into contact with here once I put the arm on. So it'll be easier for me to adjust it. So I clip it out of the sprue. And I'm going to cut away this part here. Over my garbage bin. So I don't get stuff on my floor. And now we begin the gluing process of both the arm and the head. So I'm going to do my same little mix here of super glue and plastic glue. I'm telling you, this thing works. I know there's a certain reason why it does with the chemical bonds, but like, it, it just works really well. I'm happy. And funny enough, I did this by accident one day, and I just kind of just kept doing it because it worked. In hindsight, I probably should have pinned this into the arm here since that slot's open, but... I'll fill it up with some of that filler stuff. Now we're gonna put some here and apply the shoulder plate. Perfect fit. I like it. By the way, y'all just accidentally ever like super glue a part to your finger? I've done that a few times. And oh boy, that's looking pretty cool so far. I'm liking that. Let's see how it looks on the base. Yeah! Yeah! Look at that. That looks sick. And not just because it's Nurgle, but it looks pretty cool. The legs are looking too clean, though, but we'll get to that soon. Now the tricky part. Figuring out how to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to look through my sprue bits of Primaris Marines and see what I can get out of it. So upon digging through my parts, I actually found this handy dandy death guard arm. So I don't have to use a Primaris arm, because look at that. It already has that handy dandy little marine symbol on there. How handy. So I'm going to put it downwards on the arm here. And I found this shoulder plate from my Chaos box that kind of emulates the old Mark II, Mark III shoulder plate where it's kind of flat right here, but it has that ridge on the top. 
So this would be perfect for this little guy. So as usual, we're going to glue the boy together. I'm going to put his arm facing downward just ever so slightly. So it still gives the impression of that art piece. I mean, art, piece, uh, art concept. Oh yeah, by the way, I really recommend the super glue brand it dries incredibly quick and it has such a good bond and that's how our guys looking so far honestly I'm loving how he looks let's just do a little test in this groove I made to put the cloak and oh yeah that's looking pretty cool. I think I might need a smaller one though. As I say smaller, I grab a big one. Oh, you know what, we can make it work. I could just glue it there and then green stuff some of the rest of it wrapping around there. In hindsight, I probably should have cut that part off so I can fit this gently in. Unless if I flip it, nope, it has to be this way. Consider my day absolutely ruined. Actually, no. That's how he's looking. See, so yeah, I just gonna, I'm gonna kind of manhandle that part and glue it together. And then we'll green stuff the rest of the cloak part on later. So here we are with the finished, well, almost finished. So I just kind of super glue that cloth into place so I can sculpt on the additional parts. We got to trim this little thing sticking out there. I just noticed that. And now for the final last part of the kit bash. Trying to figure out how to absolutely destroy this leg. <laughs> now, I could go the easy route and just leave it how it is and then apply that gelatinous stuff over it or I can find something here reminiscent of a foot and then apply it. I have to have some demonic foot in my bits box somewhere. Or at least a tyranid foot. Because tyranid hooves actually work pretty well for this too. So, hmm. While I did not find a tiered hoof, I instead found this handy dandy little thing, aka. I forgot the name of it. F flesh borer. A flesh borer, so I can actually chop off this side and proxy that as a little foot there. But I found an extra little adrenal sack, and I can apply that to this little knee pad here, make it look like some grotesque fungal growth and some of the uh, fly-like appendages are connecting to the shoulder uh, shoulder to the knee there so I'm just gonna do a quick little fit here and see how to apply that 
Ah, uh, it'll fit pretty snug there. I just need to clip off the round pout. Pout. I can't talk today. Round part. Just sort of, just kind of manhandle it. At this point, we're just gonna absolutely destroy this knee in the process of making it. Let's do our another fit. It's almost there. It can almost fit. It's right if I accidentally chop off some of that little knee rail thing. It'll be fine. Alright, alright, alright. That's looking pretty good. Let's bust out my X Acto knife. Make this easier to apply. I probably should have done this before I put this whole guy together. But what's well, a little practice on pressure control, huh? It just about fits. I just need to shave off some of the roundness on the sides here. Because any little gaps that will remain, I'm just going to fill up with that Vallejo stuff. Make it look all pussy and gross. Alright, perfect. Now... I'm actually just gonna super glue it, not even bother with the plastic glue. Cause the gap filler I'm gonna apply is gonna do that for me. Cause it, it solidifies pretty hard. The putty itself is this acrylic resin. So it's gonna be kinda like using like green stuff worlds, green stuff paint on putty or whatever. It's kinda essentially that. Nope, and there's the super glue shenanigans already. Ooh, yeah, look at that. It's all like gross and stuff. Maybe I should turn it the other way around. So that way the, yeah, that looks better. The sticky part is straight up. There, so I could just fill that up with like pustules and Grove stuff. Sticking a little farther out, but that's alright. Now we work on that foot. So I want it to kind of be at that sort of angle. So I'm going to clip off this very end part here. Just try to keep it as flat as possible. Alright, perfect. Now, I'm just going to chop off a little foot here. I know, heresy. What am I doing? I'm ruining a model. Well, guess what? This is kid bashing, son. That's all we do. We ruin models to make them look even more awesome. Some would say improve. Alright. Now, we're just going to see if that just plops on. Actually, I don't really need to shave down every, anything. I just need to find a good spot on this. I think I cut it at the wrong angle. That's all right. Just gonna cut this a little more upwards, a little bit like here. So that fits like a little hoof. I want to glue this all the way at the top. 
I'm gonna do that weird push tool. Like slime fat in this seeping out effect. All right, look at that. I consider that a done model. So I'm gonna just glue them to the base here. And then I'm going to green stuff and apply the acrylic stuff after he dries on the base. And now we're on to the fun part, special effects. So what I'm going to do here with our little boy is just absolutely fill in whatever gap there is between that top part and this hole here with the acrylic filler. Then I'm going to use this toothpick I have and spread it, spread it together to not only fill in the gap, but begin my little light, super simple, nothing crazy sculpting process. So once this dries, it will keep all the little indentations I make with the foot. Almost make it like the flesh is seeping right out of that foot of his. So once this dries, it'll keep in all the texture that I've created, gently just pressing it around. Which will look pretty cool. Really, this acrylic stuff is really good to use uh, for like easy, well, easy like death card bulbous tissue or to easily fix any little holes you've missed on your model because this stuff dries pretty rock hard and it's easy to uh, shave it down, cut it even. Yeah, told you we'll get to f fixing those holes. It acts like flesh is seeping right out of it. And then I'll gently fix this little tentacle back here. This one too. make it look like it's grasping it like just sticking together and now I said I was gonna green stuff this but actually I just had a neat little idea why don't I use this and because really this is the only side it just needs to connect to 
make it look like there is other sinew, maybe even flesh, holding the cape onto the shoulder plate. That's gonna look that's gonna look pretty gnarly once it's done. It's a thick piece though, so I'm gonna need a little more just to kind of make it even. And there we are. One primaris? Turned Death Guard. No Robo Girly Man here. Although Robo Girly Man, Robo Gilliman, Robooty Gilliman, but I call him Robo Girly Man for jokes. We're not approve of this. Primaris turned chaos. Yeah, there we are. Uh, stay tuned for the part two of this little adventure where we're going to paint this guy up in the standard Death Guard colors and surprise my buddy with this new little homie to be part of his army. Thanks for watching, folks, and hanging out with me for this time to see my kit bashing process. You folks have a great day, and continue paying and creating.